guys, tell me to meet your base, Michelle Marie, tell me, yeah, I got up a little while ago. Then I didn't get a chance to rush me here yet, so let's keep this short, shall we? Lummi is having her show today. Lori is out of town. Um, and yeah, my hair is snarly mess. Snarly. Let me show us her at five o'clock. Show her how you'll be a chance to see her new studio video, Pony, um, which is a marked improvement from what we had before. The colors are right, the sound is good, and you will enjoy it, I'm sure. I know that Lumi has been excited to see the new equipment as well because it means now there'll be less hiss. <laughs> And the pick, as I just said, the colors are better and the sound is better too. So yeah, the great, great new tools for that. Temperatures the next few days are crap. I don't really need to go into detail, so I already know it's gonna be in the teens and in the single digits at night. This is not seasonal for May. Um, it's not even seasonal. It may be seasonal for early March, maybe even mid March, but May, no. Um, it's overcast. Um, the, the sun was peeking out of the clouds a little today. So yeah, that's good. The weather is eh, so so. But um, the fact is that it's been crappy and is kind of disappointing to say the least. I have to admit. Um, and part of me is a little bit disappointed, and part of me is going because it's you know it's reverse seasonal effect. The soldier's like, yeah. <laughs> But, um, um, what I mean that's disappointing, um, what I need to clear air about it, is a person that knows that without the, without the warm weather, crops are not going to grow well. Um, the food isn't going to be there on the, on the, on the, on the table, dinner tables across America at prices that Americans are expecting to pay. And... That's going to cause problems for families, especially those on low income. As we start to see shortage in what happened in Kansas with the wheat crop in western Kansas, um, over 100% of the wheat crop was decimated. Um, we see this in other um, cereal crops as well, including oats, um, is that the crops are just been devastated by the flooding, the cold weather, the snow, the everything that has happened in the last few weeks. Weeks, we're not talking about months here, we're talking weeks in the areas of the Midwest. Um, plus the flooding and has causing significant damage to the rice crops uh, in Louisiana. They've seen a lot of damage to the rice crops and the rice paddies. Um, so, what's we gonna do, what's gonna happen now? What's what's gonna happen to America when they realize that there won't be no crops to feed the multitudes? Well, the first thing that's gonna happen is those people are going to be very very hungry for sure, and that's no joke. It's gonna be really really rough for everybody. Um, it's just as bad in other countries too, in China and in South America as well as, and of course, the Ukraine and Russia has also suffered devastating losses um, because of the climate cooling going on. Um, so this is uh, an issue, is how are we going to feed the approximately 7 billion people on this earth? Um, I have no clue of what's going to happen. I don't know. But I can tell you one thing. Um, and that is, is that if you got the ability to do hydroponics and in their growing, in a large greenhouse, you might be in for a really wonderful yield of sales this year, as I'm sure more and more people will be looking for growing crops inside in indoor vertical farms. This would be what uh, David Byrne on the 2030 is talking about. This is why you should have it anyway. So, if you are capable of doing that, or if you are in the business of selling that kind of equipment needed for that, you are going to have a bumper crop this year in sales, I can tell you. Because next year is going to get worse. Um, so, pick your poison, guys, because here's the truth. 
store or a greenhouse growing. <clears throat> or if you get lucky enough, you, know, you got crops like winter wheat that can, that can tolerate cold temperatures, you're going to be planting that in your summers. I can see that happening really, very easily. Also, in addition to that, um, this year, Nevada's this year, the ski resorts will be open all summer long. That's right, you can go skiing in June, July, August, and the Sierra Nevadas. So, you like snow, you want to try summer skiing, there's you go. Sierra Nevadas in California, enjoy your wonderful season, uh, extra seasonal, so summer long snow. Okay? I'm not making that up. David Byrne pointed that article out. I read the article myself. I thought it was really fascinating. Um, great for the ski resorts in Sierra Nevada, California. The Sierra Nevada is, is actually between the two states. Sierra in Nevada. It's on the California side. But still, that's a snow for you. So you can enjoy your skiing. And um, in your snowboarding and your sledding. Um, yeah. Good stuff. Okay, so, um, Dory did the cake yesterday, it came out, the cake itself came out good, um, but I think she put a little bit too much of that frosting on it, her knife at one time, and resulted in basically, I think more like a big glue that was starting to peel off her very soft sponge on the cake, which didn't help anybody. Um, if you watched the video, you'd see that. It, it was definitely... An operator error here. It was not necessarily the, the frosting problem, but the frosting is, of course, not ameliorated from me, um, the guilty party because it was definitely a little bit still too cold. Um, we should have left it under our studio lights a little longer because we only took out some of the frosting out of the 11 pound container and only put some of that into a bowl because it was just too much frosting to take the whole thing on container out. So, um, I think we definitely should have let me warm the frosting up some more and wait until it's more liquid like you see um, traditionally. But I think the frosting was designed for donuts and not for cake. Um, which you would think is going in that case. Oh, why the heck are you using it? Because we got so much of it, we had a bigger yeast for it. And I think we should have made it more liquid. And then you could have easily spread it easier. Door thought it was soft enough. I didn't think it was quite soft enough. Um, but when you got frosting like that, it's just like when you're fixing... Um, drywall, you know, you're going to put it, you're going to, you're going to put the layers on thin, um, of oh, drywall compound. She was putting in globs, okay? I bet sheet rockers could have frosted the cake better. <laughs> I don't know so much about asphalt papers. Oh, anyway, I got a phone call, but... Uh. Oh, well, so I'll talk to you guys later, guys, okay? Bye-bye.